Next, we have Emma Bronskill, Assistant Professor of Computer Science and also one of my close collaborators. I'm delighted to be here, and I particularly love the most recent panel where people discussed with incredible nuance some of the challenges we face. In five minutes, I will not be able to do the topic nearly as much justice. But it's just like those people, I really want to understand how to make the right decision at the right time. This comes up in almost everything we do, whether in healthcare, for probably the 60% of you that are trying to manage a chronic health condition, or in education, when so many of us want or need to learn new skills. Existing techniques to help ensure that good decisions are made typically rely on outsiders, experts like teachers and doctors, who are typically very expensive and often only available to a select few. How could we democratize such support to enable everyone to thrive in the 21st century? I think artificial intelligence could be a key part of the solution through computers that learn to help. We've been thinking about such systems in the context of personalized education. And while there's still many, many open challenges, we've been making some progress on systems that can help students to learn faster, persist for longer, and learn more. But what I want to do today is to tell you about two of the key insights and ideas that underlie these type of systems. The first is thinking about perhaps a quintessential aspect of human intelligence, our ability to reason about hypothetical outcomes. For example, imagine if when you went to the doctor's office, the doctor could not only prescribe the best available treatment plan for you, but they could also tell you exactly what your health was going to be like under that treatment plan, all before you even went to the pharmacy to fill that prescription. In order to do this, we require counterfactual or what-if reasoning to be able to take old data and think about what might happen under different forms of treatment strategies. This is a big challenge, and my lab and many other labs are making significant progress on it. One of the key ideas is to marry together statistical machine learning techniques along with insights from econometrics. Together, these types of approach approaches can reduce by an order of magnitude the amount of data we need in order to accurately predict how well alternative decision strategies might work. This is important because while there are many important problems that are covered by big data, there are an equal number of problems that we only have small data to access and yet require our critical attention. Another key opportunity and challenge for systems that are learning to help is to think about exactly how to gather that data. These systems can actively try things out, exploring just like an AI scientist. When we think about these systems, a lot of the standard or classic approaches tend to look at what seems to have worked best in the past and try that in the future, perhaps plus a limited amount of random experimentation. Unfortunately, these type of algorithms improve slowly. In some scenarios, this is reasonable and it does not limit their final performance. We've seen some incredible successes from our colleagues at DeepMind at these type of approaches that allow, games to, allow computers to conquer games like Atari. But if we think about using similar ideas in the context of education, we come up short. I don't want these sort of systems teaching my kid, teaching our kids, and I think we deserve better. Together again with many of my colleagues, we're thinking about better approaches. One of the key insights is to think about all the worlds that could be consistent with the observed data. Specifically, our algorithms precisely estimate their confidence in terms of their predictions of what might happen under different decision strategies. Given all this uncertainty, what sort of action should our algorithms take? Somewhat surprisingly, a key principle is to be optimistic. After all, if we are optimistic, either the world really is as good as our algorithms hope it will be, and in which case they are making good decisions. Or sadly, it is not, and our algorithms will learn from their shortcomings improve their predictions, and hopefully make better future decisions. In fact, beautifully, we can find that just the right amount of optimism can be provably optimal. What this means is that for some types of scenarios, being optimistic can allow our algorithms to require the minimal amount of data possible that any agent, artificial or human, can need to learn to make good decisions. These types of ideas are underlying many of the systems we create which particularly focus on performance and learning. In a recent experiment, one of the students decided to deviate from our prescribed condition. Instead of just following what the computer was telling him to do, 
He instead decided to intermix his own human-led and AI-led decision-making. Somewhat to our surprise, the system did far better than the other approaches. And this prompts my favorite hypothesis, that together, human and machine systems might be far more than the sum of their parts, and together might be exactly what our world requires. Thank you. <laughs>